Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace today Prince Talib bin Mohammed bin Nahum bin Shureim Al Marri. Al Murra tribe representative, accompanied by his sons Mohammed Nahum, Saad, Hamad, Naif, Fahad, Ali, and a number of their cousins upon their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King welcomed Prince Talib bin Mohammed and hailed his high status among Arab tribes, expressing pride in the deep rooted history of Al Murra tribe and their support stances to the unity of the Gulf region. His Majesty also hailed the continuous development of the historic family ties with the Al Murra tribe. His Majesty wished the Prince and the tribe success welcoming them in their country, Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace Egypt's ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Suha Ibrahim Rifat. During the meeting, His Majesty received a letter from Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, which includes an invitation for His Majesty to attend the World Youth Forum to be held in Egypt in November. His Majesty the King expressed his appreciation upon receiving the invitation, wishing the forum success and fulfilling its desired objectives to serve youth issues and aspirations, praising the deep historic relations between the leadership of the two countries countries and the two brotherly people and the advanced levels reached in many areas. His Majesty pointed out the importance of youth's efforts in building civilizations and achieving the goals of their sustainable development. He also stressed the importance of preparing them and arming them with science and knowledge to assume leadership positions in all sectors to serve their countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular today announcing Ashura anniversary holiday for the Hijri year 1439 according to the circular ministers, governments, departments and public institutions will close on Sunday and Monday the 1st and 2nd of October. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a number of royal family members and officials who congratulated His Royal Highness upon receiving the shield of the Federation of World Peace and Love, the FOWPAL, in recognition of his contribution to promoting global peace and tolerance and diversity. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the global respect and status Bahrain has attained for its accomplishments in all fields, thanks to the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's continuous efforts to adopt programs and strategies that lead to further development and prepare human resources by providing them training and education to meet the needs of development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister exchanged with the audience friendly talks and local topics where he expressed pride in the Bahraini people's efforts in developing the country and the humane elements at the pivotal role in the development process.
The Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiya Palace the Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, who presented to His Royal Highness the participants of Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for charity work. The Prime Minister affirmed that the unity of the region will not be disrupted. He praised the initiatives adopted by the Southern Governor, which aim to spread the culture of charity work and give back to those who serve their country and nation. He underscored the need of the Arab world for such initiatives, noting their noble and humanitarian values. His Royal Highness noted the importance of the Charity Award, which sheds light on the positive examples. The Premier affirmed that charity work is an integral element of Bahraini culture and heritage and is an essential pillar of Islam. His Royal Highness reiterated support to all organizations that aim to promote charity work because of its positive impact on the members of society. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his constant support to all positive initiatives, affirming that His Royal Highness is a role model in this field. For their part, the award recipients of Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Award commended the recommendations of the Prime Minister and his appreciation of their efforts, which pushes them to further contribute to society. They also expressed appreciation for Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa's initiatives.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa was presented today the Shield of the Federation of World Peace and Love, the FOWPAL, as well as the International Peace Culture Document, as well as the International Peace Union Declaration in regard to promoting peace as a global culture. This came during a meeting at Libya Palace today with Sheikh Hassan bin Isa Al Khalifa. The FOWPAL commended His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's role in internationally spreading the culture of peace through his contribution to reinforcing the values and pillars of love, peace and coexistence regardless of religious, intellectual or cultural beliefs. The Prime Minister expressed pride in being presented with the Peace Shield, which says, uh, say, which says came to honor the people of Bahrain, who are partners in each and every achievement that Bahrain accomplishes. He thanked the FOWPAL for his pioneering role in spreading the culture of peace, which has become an urging need for the world amid ongoing conflicts and tensions, which impose huge challenges for peace to prevail. His Royal Highness also expressed thanks and appreciation for the noble sentiments shown by citizens, officials and civil society institutions, in addition to ministries and ministries and government bodies on granting him the peace award. The Prime Minister thanked the delegation that received the award on his behalf, led by Sheikh Hassan bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Royal Guards Commander and uh, Chairman of the High Organization, uh, Organizing Committee for Bahrain International Defense Exhibition and Conference 2017, the Baidek Brigadier General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, shared today the periodic meeting of the event which will be held in the Kingdom from the 16th to the 18th of next month under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the great efforts and facilities provided by all concerned authorities, officials and organizers led by the Bahrain Defense Force, the National Guard and the Ministry of Interior to ensure the success of the event. He said the event is considered one of the most significant military exhibitions in the Middle East, affirming that holding such international events in the kingdom send a clear message to the world that Bahrain will continue to be on an oasis of safety and security. He reviewed the ongoing preparations to host the event in addition to what has been completed in this regard, in addition to the joint military and diplomatic efforts to reinforce cooperation between Bahrain and the international community to support the BDF goals in attracting investments and boost the tourism field. He highlighted the role of media in covering uh, the event and shedding light on the kingdom's high status. Zainal Sheikh Nasser uh, valued hosting, valued hosting uh, Middle East military alliances and coalition conference, the MIMAC 2017, which will be held during the same time. For his part, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Center for Strategic, International and Energy Studies, the Baidic Official Spokesperson and Chairman of MIMAC Organizing Committee, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, expressed pride in the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser as well as his keenness to provide all necessary facilities to ensure the success of the International Strategic Defense Gathering. He said the speakers and attendees of the event were carefully chosen in order to establish an international platform to exchange ideas and views on security and military developments in addition to the strategic visions of the participating alliances. Royal Guard Commander Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at his office at the General Command Headquarters today a delegation from the Central Command of the Special Operations of the American Forces. During the meeting, the Royal Guard Commander welcomed the American delegation lauding the ongoing cooperation between Bahrain and the United States and the development they keep witnessing on the military level. The meeting also discussed a number of topics of mutual concern. The U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom, William uh, Roebuck, and uh, the U.S. Military Attaché to Bahrain, Colonel Stephen Vincent, were present at the meeting. Bahrain has presented its third National Human Rights Report in Geneva, which was widely welcomed by a number of non-governmental organizations on the successful implementation of the Council's member states' recommendations. More in this report with Noura Abbasi. The delegates to the 36th session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva praised the statement made by Assistant Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Faisal al-Dusri on Bahrain's position on the recommendations contained in the report of the Working Group on the Third Comprehensive International Review. The representatives of a number of countries, including India, Iraq, Lithuania and Sierra Leone, expressed their appreciation for the clear efforts made by Bahrain to promote and protect human rights worldwide. Mr. President, our organization welcomes and commend the comprehensive report presented by the Deputy Foreign Minister 
Al Dosari on Bahrain, and we appreciate that Bahrain has recently taken important and effective measures to guarantee the implementation of treaties and international human rights mechanisms. Bahrain has participated in many activities, including a training course on regional and international mechanisms for the promotion and protection of human rights for the staff or government agen agencies and civil society institutions. A representative from United Schools International noted that the protection of human rights is quintessential to Bahrain's strategy, reinforced by the National Action Charter. Mr. President, the promotion and protection of human rights is an essential part of the Bahrain strategy in developing state institutions and national legislation. This is exemplified in the National Action Charter and the Constitution of 2002 and the subsequent constitutional amendments which were approved by the legislature in 2012. In response to the outcomes of the national dialogue that took place from the 2nd of July 2011 to the 25th of July 2011. Moreover, national legislation such as those concerning freedom of opinion, religious freedoms, labor laws, support of civil society organizations and unions, and the criminalization of trafficking in person reflect the growing respect for rights and liberties in the kingdom. Meanwhile, a representative from Africa Culture International stated that Bahrain continues to encourage at all levels the protection of human rights despite all challenges. Mr. President, our organization welcomes and commends the comprehensive report presented by the Deputy Foreign Minister, Mr. Al Dozari, on Bahrain. Despite the challenges it faces, the state of Bahrain mentioned it also continues its efforts at every level to encourage respect for and promote the protection of human rights. In its report, Bahrain emphasized that its respect for human rights and dignity is a consistent strategic approach in the ongoing reform process of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah. Starting with the local stocks as Bahrain All Shares Index has closed at 1,291.03 points, marking a decrease of 0.86 points below the previous closing. The decrease was in the investment, services and industrial sector and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 90% of total shares. 141 transactions included 106,926,400 15 shares worth 10,900,810 Bahraini dinars. Elba, the first aluminum smelter in the Gulf, hosts the 32nd International Aluminum Conference that is being held from the September 25th to the 27th, 2017 at Gulf Hotel Bahrain. Held under the patronage of Bahrain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, His Excellency Mr. Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani. This conference featured many keynote speakers to include Elba's Chief Executive Officer Tim Mori, who addressed Elba's success story in recovering Line 5 safely and efficiently. Alba CEO took also part in the executive panel session titled Global Challenges and Their Impact. One day before the conference, the metal bulleting delegates were given the opportunity to tour Alba Smelter and gain insights on the advanced technology and best safety practices. Alba has also hosted a welcome reception at Gulf Hotel on Monday, September 25th to welcome the delegates. The Amazon Web Services announced opening of data centers in the Middle East for the first time here in Bahrain by early 2019 in a press conference yesterday during the Technology Week, which started on the 24th of September and still going on to the 28th. More on this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Amazon Web Services brought the cloud computing community together for the Middle East's first ever Amazon Web Services Summit. A forum for collaboration on cutting-edge clouding technologies and applications designed to help businesses grow. The new infrastructure is a major enabler for technology and data-driven business across the GCC, bringing great sums of investment into the region. A sizable capital investment into the Kingdom of Bahrain that we believe will um, allow innovation uh, to occur in the private sector. We think it will help uh, new small businesses. 
it really has a dramatic impact on the uh, economic development of a country. So uh, we've seen it in other regions, in Ireland, in Europe, in Asia, in India, and we think it will have a similar impact here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Not only monetary investments, it will also bring in thousands of jobs to make use of the great calibers in the Middle East aiming to enrich and diversify its workforce. In Bahrain, 54% of the workforce in government are females and many of them work in the computer science field already and 60% plus of the computer science students both here in Bahrain and in Saudi Arabia are females. So we feel like we can access a really diverse uh, workforce here and really want to promote that. That's been one of our uh, sort of cornerstones of doing things here in the Middle East and around the world is bringing diversity to the workforce of technology. Moreover, supporting the advancement of technology education, training and certification programs will be available at local universities, providing students and educators with the resources needed to accelerate cloud-related learning in addition to accelerators for startups and new businesses. Break the barrier of entry of, on young entrepreneurs, small enterprises to enter the world of e-commerce. Uh, any innovative person, anybody with an idea, will be able to go get, take that product and deploy it in the cloud and compete with global, regional businesses at the same level, if not better. So they will be more efficient, have the higher probability of success with the lowest cost. It's a new era marking further realization of the principles of sustainability, fairness and competitiveness built in years of continuous efforts. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul